Confession, I just recorded this entire video and realized after I'd recorded everything that I had a little smudge of makeup on my upper lip. <laughs> so I'm recording this for the second time now, just crossing my fingers for no more makeup mishaps. Today's video is going to be a little bit of a part two to a video that I did a few weeks ago now, and that video was five things that I've stopped doing since living abroad, and now, today, I'm gonna to be doing five things that I've started doing. Just in case you're new here, I'm an American who currently lives in Paris, France. I've been here for about two and a half years, and the first living abroad experience I had was for a year in the UK in Bristol, England. That's my little 10 second pitch about my life, but if you wanna see more, then just check out the other videos on this channel and my Instagram where you can find a whole lot more about my living abroad experiences. But anyway, I digress. Today's video is going to be about things that I have started doing, so ways that I have changed. At least one of these things has very much to do with where I came from versus where I've moved, but I think in general, a lot of these things are things that other people who live abroad or who move abroad for a certain amount of time have experienced or can relate to, at least I hope so. So if you are one of those people who has or is living abroad, please do let me know in the comments below if you agree with these things, if you've also experienced them, if there's other things that you would add because yeah, these are just gonna be five. This is like the tip of the iceberg. The first thing that I've started doing a lot more since moving abroad is budgeting and budgeting very well and very efficiently and very organized. Part of this of course is just growing up and becoming more independent and getting a better grasp on your finances. So no matter where you are and what experiences you've had, I'm sure you've experienced that transition from being really bad at budgeting and not doing it very efficiently to hopefully getting to a better place with budgeting. But I think when you move abroad, your planning has to be just that much better and your organization and your meticulousness, is that a word? I think it is, I feel like it is, but also haven't finished my coffee today, so <laughs> not quite sure. You have to be that much more on top of things and this is, this extends further than budgets. This is you know, visas and paperwork and bank accounts and currencies and there's just so many things involved. So I think for me at least, I've gotten a lot more on top of those administrative, not fun details of life, of adult life. Ooh, it's so fun, it's so exciting. <laughs> when I say budgeting, I'm not just talking about saving and, and being frugal and counting pennies and all of that, which can be a part of it because living abroad can be expensive and especially moving abroad, like making that jump can be quite expensive. So maybe budgeting does have something to do with it. But even once you get to a, a place where you're comfortably living, budgeting is still so important and staying on top of those things and knowing how much you spend, that even changes when you move to a different country because the prices of things change and what goods and, and and materials are available to you. Goods and materials sounds very much like I'm a tradesman or something. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like groceries and clothes and everything. There's gonna be different ranges of prices and you have to go to different stores and you have to figure out, you know, what's in your budget. You have to monitor these things a lot more than if you just continue the same routine, going to the same places, buying the same types of things and, and sort of just knowing inherently what you're spending and how much you need for this and how much you need for that. That changes, especially when you have a different currency too, because you, you know the numbers could be the same, but the actual amount that you're paying could be quite different. So yeah, living abroad has definitely heightened my awareness and made me think about this stuff a lot more. The second thing I've started doing a lot more since moving abroad is watching multilingual content. I have always enjoyed watching multilingual stuff, especially Spanish, because I grew up learning Spanish. I didn't learn French until fairly recently. And I would sometimes watch TV shows in Spanish. I would definitely listen to music all the time in Spanish. I've always been exposed to multilingual content to a certain extent in the past. But I always found when I would watch like a full-fledged TV show or a movie or something that was intended for Spanish speakers, that wasn't intended for students and learners of Spanish, I would always find myself getting frustrated when I didn't understand everything. And that was basically all the time because I've never been 100% fluent in Spanish. So watching a TV show or watching a movie in Spanish is, is a big task. And I would always find myself wanting to put on English subtitles, not even Spanish subtitles, because Spanish subtitles, there would be vocabulary that I didn't know or slang that I didn't know or go too fast or something. So I would always wanna put English subtitles because I hated the idea of missing something. I wanted to understand 100% everything that was happening and it was extremely frustrating when I didn't. Now that I've lived for two and a half years in a French speaking country though, 
And when I first moved here, I had a fairly decent French level because I'd studied quite a bit on my own. I've never taken classes in French, but I wasn't 100% fluent. I definitely missed the majority of the stuff that I just kind of heard around me. So I've gotten a lot more used to not understanding 100% of what's going on around me. I also, when I was learning French, pushed myself to watch shows in French or to watch movies I'd already seen before in English. I watched a lot of Disney actually in, in French because I knew the stories and stuff. So if I missed stuff, I could still at least keep up with the plot. I also watched YouTube videos I watched so many like 20 30 minute vlogs any vlog channel I could find that would do these nice big vlogs with there's lots of speaking and I didn't understand like 95% of what I was watching when I first started watching this stuff but I really was trying so hard to immerse myself and to learn really well and really fast and now I've gotten to a point where I mind a lot less when I miss little things and also I've gotten a lot better at pulling out the things that I do catch and that I do notice and I'm actually able to follow a lot more than what I ever realized I could follow because I was, I was always getting so hung up on the things I didn't understand and getting frustrated about those. So I wasn't able to fully appreciate what I could understand and realize that it's actually making sense. The plot is actually coming together. Even if I missed that little quip or I missed that little word or didn't quite understand that exchange, but I still can follow. Kind of related to that one is the third thing that I've started doing a lot more of, and that is I have started using whatever words that I know in language and stressing a little bit less about the ones that I don't. This is something I struggle with so much with Spanish, and when I first started learning French, I really had to kick the habit, and I really had to sort of get over some self-consciousness that I still have occasionally, but a lot less. With Spanish, what really held me back was I was so hung up on getting the words right. You know, I was so used to in class, the, the conversations and the prompts that we had were all based around stuff we were supposed to know. I was so used to, to feeling like I should know how to say something and I should be able to express whatever I was needing to express and whatever I was needing to get across. And when you live abroad in a country that speaks a different language, you are faced with so many situations, hundreds, thousands of situations, where you can't possibly know the vocabulary that you need and you can't possibly be expected to understand whatever's happening around you. There will be tons of situations like that. Even once you get fully 100% fluent, there will be times when you just need that native speaker touch and you just, you miss something and, and you can't be expected to not have missed it. Since living abroad, I've experienced that so much that I have really gotten a lot better at using what I know and working around and sort of within the, the containment of what I know and what I can say and do and just making it work for me. Sometimes that means, you know, sort of drifting around the actual word I want to say because I don't know that word, so I have to sort of explain around it. And sometimes it's hearing something, not understanding it, and sort of fudging your way through whatever response because you didn't fully understand it. Or asking to repeat. I actually did a whole video about this. I will link you up here if you want to watch it. But I did a whole video about dealing with language barriers and some tips and stuff that, that I've picked up and that I've developed since living abroad. But really it's just made my ability to to be a bit more confident in what I do know and not stress so much about the other stuff. It's still a journey. It's definitely something I still struggle with. We're all human. I think probably some of us maybe have a tendency to deal with it more than others. I do have kind of a perfectionist streak. And really living abroad has, has helped me so much, has pushed me out of my comfort zone in so many ways that I've gotten a lot better about this. And this applies to even languages that I don't speak. Like for example, I went to Germany for a few days last year and I learned a few German words like how to say hello and thank you and excuse me and things that I knew I'd sort of need in everyday situations. And whenever I had a situation where I could use one, I used it. And then of course everything else, you know, the rest of the entire German language, which I haven't learned yet, I wasn't able to do anything with, but I used the ones I knew in the situations I, I knew to use them in. I was a bit nervous, of course, because it's a language I'm not really used to, but I used them anyway. And that's something that I'm not sure I would have had the confidence to do several years before. The fourth thing I've started doing a lot more is making friends with people with a lot wider range of interests. One of the key things about making friends is having something in common with them. And before I moved abroad, this was always pretty much without fail. I can't think of any exceptions to this rule. It was always based on an activity that we did. So we did orchestra together or we were, you know, intensive readers and love reading. So we had that in common. There was always some sort of activity or some passion that we shared. Now that I'm living abroad, living abroad in and of itself has become a new connection that I can make with people, that this has become something new that I can find in common with other people. But what's really cool about living abroad being that thing that you have in common with someone 
is because your experiences can often be very, very different. Travelers who have lived in a million places all over the world, they could be people who have lived in a country because they moved for love or because they moved for school or because they moved for any number of reasons. All we have in common is that we're in a place where we don't belong, we're slightly displaced. And it's so cool to make this connection with people who really are so different from you and have such different backgrounds and maybe have such different interests often, but you're still able to make that connection and to make it a real friendship. The fifth and final thing that I have started doing a lot more since moving abroad is I have started walking and using public transportation a lot more. This one has very much to do with where I lived before and where I moved because depending on your situation, where you come from and where you end up moving and living abroad, it could be quite different. But for me, I am from a smallish town in the Midwest where cars cars dominate. Cars really do rule that part of the world. I think anyone who comes from a really big spread out country like this can understand what I'm saying here, but it's impossible to get around in that sort of environment without a car. Since moving abroad though, I have lived for a year in Bristol, England, which I guess I would describe as a small city. They have a decent bus system, they have a train station where you can get out of Bristol and visit other cities and towns, and I lived really close to basically every university building that I needed to get to, so I just walked pretty much every day wherever I needed to go. I could walk to the grocery store, I could walk to the mall, I could walk to classes, to libraries, to everything. I could just walk everywhere. And further than that, like I said, I had public transportation. Now I live in Paris and I don't think I need to explain to you the fact that the public transportation system in like Paris proper, not talking about the, the suburbs, but actual Paris, you have metros and you have bus systems and bus lines, even night buses. Of course, there are Ubers and taxis if you really do need to, to get by with a car, but you don't have to drive and normally you don't even need to be in a car. Once you go outside of Paris and especially in countryside France, cars do become very practical, but even then things are closer and you don't drive to the same extent, the same distances as what I had to drive when I was living in the US. So that means that I have been able to start taking a lot more public transportation and I have started walking a ton more than I ever used to be able to walk places. It's become my main way to get around. I don't drive in France. I've never driven in France. I can't drive in France. And same for the UK. I never drove and never was able to drive. That would have been even more complicated because it would have been on the opposite side of the road than I was used to driving. Again, this is a situation that varies depending on where you come from and where you end up living abroad. But I think if I were to sort of generalize this in a way that that most people or all people living abroad could experience, it's that living abroad changes those types of habits, the habits of, of how you move and get around and, and get to the places you need to be. And just that one thing when you think about it can change quite a bit about your, your little daily habits. Like for example, I basically don't wear high heels anymore. I used to wear high heels all the time because I played in orchestra and I played in chamber groups and for gigs and for weddings and things. Now I have to do a lot of walking on you know streets that are not always paved very well. I've just stopped wearing heels. <laughs> So there you have it. There are the five things that I have chosen to talk about in this video. But like I said, there are a ton more things that I could talk about in a future like installment of this if you would like, or I could talk about it more on Instagram or in a Q&A or something. Definitely do keep the conversation going in the comments below. If you are living abroad, if you have lived abroad, let me know if you can relate to these things that I talked about or if there are things that you would add to this list. As always, thank you so much for watching and I will talk to you very soon in another video.